it's driving time. This is part three of this four part series where we're gonna cover how we made this driving and road system. So to elaborate a bit more on that, we're gonna be using a spline rig that we've built in another video and we'll link below. But we're gonna start with this spline rig that we're gonna to use to control the car. And we're actually using a third party plugin that I purchased for this one. You can make your own road system if you want. There's plenty of tutorials out there, but this one had a lot of features that I liked and it saved a bunch of time. We'll link that below as well. And then we're gonna connect this road system to the spline, so wherever the car goes, the road goes. And if you really want to take it further, there are options to control your landscape as well. I didn't do that for this video, but you can do that if you'd like, where all these things can be controlled off of one spline, which saves you loads of time, especially when you want to do revisions. So let's get started. Uh, first thing on this, we're gonna cover this spline rig. So yeah, outside of this scene, start opening up some blueprints. Now, this is a blueprint that I've made in another tutorial where we covered uh, spline animation. Pretty much the same thing. It's small, cute, and adorable. And I will say for this video, there is a plug. I'm using a Pied plugin. You can make your own road system if you want. I didn't want to spend that much time. I found this one on the Epic Games Store by Rendertail Props. It's got two reviews, neither of which are mine, but they'll be getting one soon. And this one just has a bunch of different components that just made it worth it. It's about 60 bucks, saved me a bunch of time. But if you compare, look at all this stuff that you don't have to deal with inside if you just, you know, buy it. So take my money, great. I built this road system out it comes with some pre-made meshes that look a lot like these dusty old roads, which I didn't want to do. I went into Cinema 4D and I created my little synth wavy road. So nothing special. This checkerboard doesn't transfer out. This is just inside Cinema. I use this to check my UVs, but I've got railing left, railing right, these road lines and this main piece. I exported these out as FBXs and brought these back in. Let's minimize this down. Let's check this road system. Um, so I've got these guardrail meshes added in, these road meshes, and I have a material override. So before I get into this, let me show you the last few pieces of this thing. This is the material that I'm using for the road. This is a cart and horse material. You can buy it on the store. You cannot buy it, but I've had a lot of fun with these and I use this to create the road for this particular piece. I was trying to use some substrate stuff. At this point in time, it's just not quite there yet, so we abandoned it. And let's pull up and take a good look at this scene. So, city skyline, forget that. We're not covering that this video. Sky dome, which is beautiful, and look at that Sith wavy sun. Just great. And other than that, I've got the road system that's based off a of spline. I have a few other ones that I played with camera moves that are all spline based. Like I said, different tutorial. Um, you can link back to that and watch that if you wanna see it in more detail, but we're gonna kind of burn through this right now. And I've got this base material with this little texture on there that I made in JS placement. Everything's moving so fast that it all kind of mushes together, but it did what I wanted to do. So let's get into it. Okay, first thing we want to cover is the spline rig. Let's open this up. Not a lot going on here, which is great. I've got the construction script. Like I set most of these other things up, we've got a branch with this final render boolean and the spline rig functionality. So this is false for the construction script so we can see this inside of the sequencer and the event tick is going to drive everything that happens in the final render. Let's dig into the spline rig functionality. So in here, I've got a spline rig reference. So here is a spline. I came into this, added a spline, not a spline mesh, but a spline. And I added a few simple static meshes with nothing attached to it. There's a cube in here that I put just so I can kind of toggle visibility on and off, but this is basically my cart. I'm attaching everything to this that I want this rig to go. So if you wanna know how I did this, very simple, static mesh, just make one of these and drop it in. 
any other static meshes will attach to this because of the same type. You don't actually have to populate because if you look at this thing, there's nothing in here. So it's basically a null object if you're a Cinema 4D user. I've got a target in here. I don't think I ended up using this, but the goal was to have where I could duplicate this and have something that I could point at this and separate this from the card and animate it around. And then the cube is in here as well. I think I just turned off visibility, but you can leave this on if you wanna see where it's at before you attach anything. It's more of a troubleshooting thing than anything else. Outside of this quick overview, I'm not gonna dig into how to build this spline rig any further. We've already made this video that covers it here in more detail, so you can see how to get caught up to speed to where I'm at at this point, and then keep going with the rest of this road system. Now I've got some camera animations in here that are flipping around and doing some cool stuff. And as you'll see here, we are set to final render, so nothing's actually animating. So let's set this. Now we're traveling along the track because we're working off the construction script, not the final render. And if I want this DeLorean to cooperate as well, we uncheck this. So let's back this up. Now you'll see the wheels are spinning, everything's aligned. This is a good preview of the animation of how we're gonna see it. And I've got this thing traveling from zero to 900, so 30 seconds. And after 30 seconds, this thing is traveling along and I've just set some keyframes to have this drift around and the wheels turn, the wheels are constantly spinning, but I've got this thing driving. I've also gone ahead and created a few level sequences and with just different camera animations on here. So I have some different stuff to cut between and it's pretty fast to render out. So we've got this DeLorean, the camera's attached to it, that I'm just kind of animating these things around at different angles at different points. And this DeLorean is following the spline all the way through. Now, how does this relate to the road? So let's go into this road generator. Looks like there's not a lot happening in here until you look at this thing. Man, look at the construction script and then, holy crap, there's a ton. Honestly, if you buy this thing and you go through the same steps that I did, you'll see that everywhere where they had this spline referenced, so you can right click on this and find references. And this is what I did. I looked at all of these, I selected it. And if you double click it, it takes you right to this exact reference. You can see here that the spline that's referenced inside of the system is what's plugged into all these. Now. I showed you, here's how we can access everything. I came in and referenced this BP spline into this target and the spline rig, I went through and just replaced everything. So what this is telling it is instead of looking at the spline within your blueprint, I want you to look at the spline within BP spline reference, which is this main thing. I went through and just double clicked it. You can look through here and replaced all of these. And once it's all done, you can compile it. So now this whole road system is looking at this spline rig that I set up. So if we minimize this whole thing and we back out, this initial spline rig that I've got with this spline, I went through and I created this whole driving path that you see and the road follows it. Now, every once in a while, I have to go in here and uncheck generate road and check it again. So as the spline changes, you kind of got to generate the uh, data again, but it all follows the same, which is great because this DeLorean now follows this path, which is the same path as the road. So wherever the car goes, the road goes. How convenient. And I pretty much just made this whole thing loop around. One useful tip I did forget to mention in this video is when you're working with the spline tools, if you want a smooth camera animation, you need to be mindful about the number of points that you use and the tangents. So one thing that tripped me up that I had to figure out was that generally using fewer points was better. And on top of that, you wanna make sure that your tangents between one point and the next are overlapping, like touching or pretty close to it. So if you're finding like your tangents are short and you're getting like jerky camera moves or something like that, that's probably why. And that's how this spline rig works with this road rig. And really at this point, it's all kind of automated. So if I flip my camera on and we have this guy driving and we check everything 
back on, which is the way it should be. So now this guy's driving and I get a rough preview of how all this stuff is working. And I did a few different camera moves across different uh, level sequences and rendered them all out. Gave me a little bit more to edit with, which was nice. But that's the bulk of it. It just, this camera is attached to the vehicle and it just kind of moves around. So I just keyframed it from position to position. And let's show you a little bit more on this camera rig. So all these cameras are following. Little paparazzi or whatever. Look at tracking, I check this on. And then actor to track, I have a null object, which you can see is pretty much just attached to the car. If I can maneuver this around correctly. Cam target two, wherever this thing moves, I'm just animating its position. That's where the camera is going to aim. So I could kind of use that to control composition and position all that. And that's really all I had to animate. I animated a couple cameras, a couple targets, and this whole thing kind of just goes on the spline as one big moving piece that I could render out. Got a few different shots to work with. It gave me plenty to edit with, and it was super fast. And that's this whole thing in a, in a nutshell. We've got the DeLorean following the spline, a road that's following the spline. And if you were really feeling up to it, you could make the landscape follow it as well, which is super efficient. And if you wanna make changes, it saves you a ton of time. Go you, go DeLorean, go back to the future. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, do all the stuff. And keep an eye out for number four. It'll complete this series where we're going to go over how we built the city uh, using PCG.